Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And of course, we're going to continue looking at these verses, Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Lots of little things to consider. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful that we can meet once again as we open your word and invite your spirit into our hearts and minds to teach us. We know, Lord, that um, there's many things here still that we need to sort through and that we don't understand fully. And I just pray that you can help us as we examine your word and examine our hearts. Uh, We pray for each person, for the struggles that they face, the trials. And we ask, Lord, that you can help us to reflect your character in all that we do. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. So yesterday we, uh, we we did a review of basically verses 14 to 39, and then we started looking at Daniel 11, verse 40. And uh, we were addressing uh, this number that has to do with like what we call the lexical sums. That is, if we take all of these Hebrew numbers and we add them together, you know, from the Strong's Dictionary, we get this number 96266, I believe, if I remember correctly. We figured out how long that was. So it's 96226. And, and it's a period of 263 years and 100 and almost 180 days, almost. I can't remember exactly. Let me see. Minus 263 is 172. 165, that's what it is. 165 and a quarter days. And, and I knew I had something with that that Iran and I had worked on previously. And, and we sort of looked at that. We found if we went from November 9th, 2019, and we counted back the number of days. Yeah, so it's 96,226 days between uh, November 9th, 2019, going back to May 25th, 1756. Now, May 25th, 1756 is on the biblical calendar, the 25th day of the second month. So we have a 525 and a 252. And that seems to be just that it brings us back to this symbol of the 252 and the 525, which relates to the 777. So that's what we can find by using that span of time. Whether that's exactly where we can place it or should place it, I don't know. But we, you know, we tried looking at it from when the, the calendar changed, and that's going to bring us to February 29th, 2016. Doesn't appear to be anything significant uh, regarding that date. So maybe there's some other date that it goes to. Now, I didn't look at 17, I think it's 1798. It's still going to bring us too far into the future. What was the other thing that we had? What was that date you had, uh, Iran, in uh, 1764? Was that like June 3rd? Not sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, June 3rd. Yeah, okay. So that's a long explanation. But that if we go to that date and we take the span of time, it brings us to November 18th, 2027. So again, it doesn't. Now I'm I'm trying to remember, and I've now when I originally was counting these uh, uh, lexical sums, I was I was I was using I was copying the text and I was putting it into so I into um, Excel, and for some reason it wouldn't add the last number. I'm not sure why that was, and and I got a different number, and I think that was why I ended up with something that seemed more significant than these other ones. And I think I had 90,552. I don't remember what I did with that. Sorry, I should have done this before the study, but I was doing other things. Yeah, so May 25th, 1756 would be about 19 years before the start of the American Revolutionary War. So where are you starting the American Revolutionary War? What's the, what's the date? We have for that April nineteenth, seventeen seventy-five. So it's in seventeen seventy-five. Okay. Well, that's what it has online anyway. Yeah. Do they have a specific date? Well, I said uh, April the nineteenth. It ends in September third, I think, or something like that. 
uh, in 18, 1783. Okay. I mean, you guys can look it up. I'm terrible with dates. Yeah, well, we also have the start of the Seven Years' War uh, a week before May 25th, 1756. Now, the Seven Years' War as a symbol is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's called the Seven Years' War in Canada. It's the... Um, the French Indian War in the U.S. And, and they started in 1754 in American history. In Canadian history, we call it the Seven Years War. And we started on May 18th or May 17th, depending, uh, 1756. So whether the Seven Years War as a symbol is, and, and it's no called calm with the other guy. I don't even remember my Canadian history, let alone anybody else's. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was just in Canada we call it the Seven Years' War because that's when Britain gets involved in this war. And and Britain is going to declare war on France on uh, May 18th, 1756. So Canada then becomes part of that war, and that war is going to end in, uh, you know, 1763. Um, but as a symbol, what's that? Oh, I do recall that much. Yeah. Yeah. Quebec. Yeah, I was in Quebec at the time. Yeah. Now, in a sense, they could have called it a world war, but it, it's definitely one of the first, you know, internet. It, well, it is the first international war, right? It's how it's understood. So you have India, you have France, you have Britain, you have Canada. You have all these different countries. Canada is not really a country yet at that time, but you know, all of the the British Empire involved in this war. And, and it's going to lead to um, the French giving up a lot of territory, uh, such as the territory in Canada. Um, that's why it's important for Canada. Um, and then um, Louisiana, uh, the Spanish, I think, give up Florida. So there's a lot of territory that, that actually helps the United States become what it becomes later in, in the revolution, the American Revolution that's going to follow. So it's important whether we should be looking at that in more detail or not as a symbol, just because maybe there's something about that war, you know, that parallels, you know, 1798 and 1989 in our time in some way, or whether there's just symbols attached there, you know, the Seven Years' War, you know, the dates of May 25th and the biblical date of 225. I don't know, right? So it's, it, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, a hundred late years later in 1856, we're going to have Hiram Metzen's seven articles on uh, the times of the Gentiles. And then seven years later, so a hundred years after the end of the seven years war, you're going to have, you know, the 1863 charts and the organization of the Seventh-day Adventist church and so forth. And, and so maybe there's some symbols that attaches to that, just this parallel a hundred years later. I don't know, right? So it's just, we're looking at a symbol. And, and this is what we do for people watching these things. We, we, we understand the historical application of these verses. And we're, we're going to go through that, pick through this a bit more in detail as we try to look at the present truth application. But, but taking these Hebrew numbers, we just use them as symbols. They're not, like we're not producing anything from it. We're just sort of confirming what we understand. And it does help us set these things on a line because sometimes we get spans of times where we can connect events that are parallel or we can connect different lines. So it could seem odd to somebody just like if you're watching this video for the first time because um, it's not numerology. We're not uh, doing anything magical with the use of numbers. We're just looking at structures and symbols. So so we looked at that that span span of time that we get from nine six two two six now if i take off the last word i get nine zero five five two and that ends up being 247 years and so nine zero five two two if i remember what i did with this one nine zero five five two that wasn't what it was so i'm not certain that's what the, those symbols mean so I can't remember what I did with that before, with that, those numbers. Okay. Now, um, so we have, go back here. So when, when we're looking at this again, so we know the time of the end 
uh, the time in the end is 1798, and the king of the south shall push at him. So we know that's France, uh, February 15th, 1798 is the date we give. That's when uh, Berthier, uh, Napoleon's general, takes uh, Pope Pius VI captive. And he's going to go into exile, and he's going to be in exile until he dies in 17. 17- 1799 on August 29th, I think is correct. And any comments about that? So he's going to be in exile or from when he's captive to when he dies. It's going to be a period of 560 days. And then we're going to have um, the response. So the king of the north, uh, the papacy with the U.S. shall come against him. The USSR, in this case, is now is atheistic communism instead of France. So it's going to come against them. We're, we're, we're marking here November 9th, 1989, uh, with chariots, horsemen, with uh, many ships. So that we say that that has to do with uh, the military and economic power or pressure placed upon uh, the Soviet Union. So we have uh, American military pressure, American economic pressure is the ships. And he shall enter into the countries. So there we have uh, this word countries, which we're going to say represents the former Soviet bloc nations and shall overflow and pass over. um, And that will be the fall of the USSR on December 25th, 1991. So 776 days later. And of course, we notice we now that's the cardinal count. Obviously, it's on the 777th day that the Soviet Union falls. I'm just going to add here on no, and I'll write in here. Okay, and we can see that this is all the um, the historical application of this prophecy, right? We haven't we haven't done a present truth application. So the present truth application of this, we will look at as being, this is pretty simple, November 9th, 2019, right? That's going to be the start of that 777 days. Uh, That's going to parallel the end of this, which is December 25th, 2021. So I think that's pretty straightforward. I don't think that that is something that we would have to mull over, really. We, we know that there, that's the parallel to our history. We take the start of the time of the end in our time and we can parallel November 9th, 2019. Now, we know that we also have in this history, we have 9-11. And we know 9-11 and November 9th connect together as well. So there may be things that we would have to look at here. Now, in this present truth application, this is an application that we are applying to our movement. The King of the South, in this case, has to do with what we call the Omega, right? That's Parminder's movement. It it's parallels it. And in this case, uh, the King of the North. Now, how, how do we feel? Not that our emotions matter so much. Uh, but, but how do we feel about the idea that this movement, Future for America, represents uh, the papacy with the USSA. The USSA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that uh, Freudian slip. Uh, um, with the, so we got future for America represented, representing the present truth application. A- any thoughts on that? So it's going to be the king of the north. Uh, people are being shut out because they're, they don't agree with Jeff on certain points. Then I would say, yeah, it's definitely a papacy thing. That papacy okay. spirit. Yeah. So, yeah. So there are aspects of things that exist within our movement that the movement needs to repent of. And, and it, it's not meant to be like a criticism of Jeff as a person, it, it, but it is a weakness that he has. One is he trusts the wrong people. So he listens to these voices and because of that, they're going to be acting in a way that, and, and Jeff keeps responding to this. You know, people keep saying that there's this kingly power. And, and, and I, I think in a lot of ways it was unjustified. 
because I don't think that Jeff as a person was trying to exert kingly power. But I do believe because of the information that he had, he didn't feel that he could do anything different, that he had to stop what was happening. But but he should have known better, I mean, in my view. But, you know, all of us are different as human beings. I mean, I'm no good at bossing people around. That's why I was never a good boss and was never a good choir conductor. I don't like telling people what to do. I'd rather them just do it and do it the best they can. And sometimes when I should be telling people what to do, I don't. But, uh, you know, that's a whole other issue. There's things dealing with personalities. But I, I think the problem wasn't really Jeff as a person. I think it was the situation that he was in. Now, he sort of put himself in that situation where he was dependent upon other people for information. But we can see future for America. But we can connect that to uh, the king of the north, right? We can say that this is, there is, an, in a sense, a parallel there. So Future for America has this parallel in this history with that situation. And so on November 9th, 1989, there is this conflict. Now, there's a lot more to the conflict between Parminder's movement and Jeff's, because we know it's going to be, there's, you know, we, we say November 9th is this this date in which we see, you know, the Berlin Wall fall. But there's a lot of stuff existing prior to that. And, and we normally start with this, um, you know, these, these different, there's different ways that we look at this span of time. So when we looked at it, we looked at what happened with the Soviet-Afghan War in uh, 1979. That's going to start, right, on, uh, is it December 25th, 1979? I, I remember. Anybody remember? I'll find it quickly. So the Soviet-Afghan War, yeah, December 24th, 1979 to February 15th, 1989. And, and we saw a lot of significance in those dates. You know, uh, obviously the February 15th, 1798 and February 15th, 1989. Obviously those, those connect. And December 24th, of course, is the day before December 25th. But it still has some symbol symbolism connected with December 25th. So we did, we had that date. Then we also have, you know, the first meeting of Reagan and Pope John Paul II on June, I think it's, is it 1982? June 7th? Yeah, I think it's June 7th. Yeah, it's June 7th, 1982. I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah. In the Vatican. So safe behind, inside the Vatican behind closed doors for the first time in history, a Pope and a president met alone. Right. So this is from the history reader. 50 minutes. So we know that that's that's connected with the fall of the Soviet Union as well. So we know that we have in, in our history, we have um, September 6th or pardon me, September September 7th, 2019. That's when Jeff is going to wake up. That's going to be 63 days before November 9th, 2019. And the, the last presentation at Lambert Church before it closes. So, you know, we, we could probably connect those things as well. You know, we could connect the Reagan and all that. Maybe there's ways that we could connect that with September 7th, 2019. I don't know. Spans of time or something like that. But we know that there is this preparation that occurs. So it's... uh it's not like it just happens out of nowhere. But those are the main dates we have. November 9th, 2019 and December 25th, 2021 in our history that parallel November 9th, 1989 and December 25th, 1991 at, at the beginning of our line. So this period of 30 years later. So I don't know what else we could put in here. I mean, obviously the Omega parallels atheistic communism and it's, it's in our history. It's, it's wokeism which is atheistic communism, but sort of a, a new development of it. I mean, to say that, you know, Parminder's atheistic, not in the strictest sense, but really it's it's very parallel. What his beliefs do not really fit into a theistic view. Okay, now we got uh, the chariots, the horsemen, the many ships. Is there things that we could use that would parallel these? 
So the American military pressure, is there some parallel of American military pressure uh, to what happens in the movement? Is there is there military pressure and economic pressure that's happening in the movement, military and economic? Is there a parallel to that? So so what's the battle over when it when it comes to this battle with Parminder and Jeff, Future for America, and the the Alpha and the Omega? Uh, whether we want God to lead us, let God be true, and every man a liar, or whether we want man's suppositions to be dominant. Well, the way, the way of the flesh. I mean, all these ideas seem so so appealing to those who want to operate in the flesh. This yeah. gender bending, all this other garbage. Right. So I still think, you know, when I looked at what happened in that period from September 7th to November 9th, and then all through to 777 days to December 25th, 2021, and we examined that in the book of Judges, the parallels there. I mean, one of the things we see is, you know, there is this territorial fight. So we know that um, Bronwyn sided with Parminder's movement. She was working, in a sense, behind her dad's back in what she was maneuvering to do. I mean, it's kind of a terrible thing to say about somebody. But she wasn't telling her dad everything. She knew where Parminder's movement was going before it got there if that makes sense. She wasn't just caught up in the moment. She had been clandestinely working behind the scenes. And, and that's one of the things she accused me of, which which is just kind of bizarre that I would ever do anything in secret. But um, But part of that would be the fact that she did things in secret that she imagined other people are doing things in secret, that they're conniving and planning. And she was. Now, she may have justified it for all kinds of reasons. Um, I don't know what her motivations are or anything like that. But she wanted to position herself to still be in charge of the School of the Prophets when Parminder didn't want that to happen. Uh, and she finds this out while she's in uh, there in Germany there at the time. And she leaves. You know, she tries to portray it sort of as she just couldn't. Uh, you know, go along with what was happening. But she had already gone along with it. It was merely because she didn't have control of the School of the Prophets and that Parminder wanted to have control of that. So if she hadn't rebelled, you know, or if Parminder had just given her control of the School of the Prophets, Parminder's movement probably would have had complete control of Future for America and the School of the Prophets. You know, we parallel, unfortunately, you know, sort of as Judas's betrayal, and, and Parminder and Tess sort of did that with a Bronwyn as well, except that they didn't consider uh, her as betraying Jeff. They considered her betraying them. But really, she had betrayed the movement. And um, so some of the things they said there about the fact she had control of the money and things like that, like Judas had control of the purse, would definitely apply. So there is, in this battle against the Omega, there is economic pressure. So we could say that that has to do with the control of the assets and, uh, you know, of, of Future for America and the School of the Prophets, that, that this pressure is put upon Parminder's movement. So there's, I, I don't know if that's, is that a good parallel? And then the military pressure would be uh, the pressure that came from Jeff himself on September 7th. Is that a fair parallel? Uh, I could see where it would fit. Okay. But I think all this infighting is like soldiers fighting among themselves, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a difficult time for the movement. I mean, it, just to go back and sort of rehearse what happened, obviously, um, you know, on October 13th, 2018, um, well, we'll go back even to October 3rd. You know, we're going to have... Tess doing these meetings, she's going to introduce this new date, November 9th, 2019, as the close of probation. She doesn't really apply it like the close of probation for the priests in its particular way. It's just the close of probation for this movement. And then on October 13th, it's going to be confirmed, the November 9th, 2019 date, and but in a different way than what Tess had done, though some of Tess's stuff would apply. But it's not really how we would get that date, how she gets the date 
is more what I would call support in symbols for a date, but she doesn't really have a basis for the date. She doesn't have a line upon line method to arrive at that date. And we do, right? So I confirm that the date is a valid date. And then we're going to get the July 18, 2020 date within a, within a couple of weeks. We're going to have July 18, 2020 uh, connected to Ezekiel's prophecy and uh, to Josiah Litch's prophecy. And, and that's going to unfold, you know, really quickly. And, and Jeff is going to start promoting this, right? But, but then he's going to back off because parliamentary and tests don't like the July 18, 2020 date. Uh, they don't like my involvement at all, even in confirming November 9th, 2019. And uh, and then we're going to see things develop. So I'm going to be kicked out of the School of Prophets, Heidi and I are. We're going to be banned from promoting July 18, 2020, which I go along with. And then the camp meeting in Canada in June, at the end of June in uh, 2019. Jeff's going to invite me to, let me see, is that, no, I'm getting backwards. No, it's going to be, that's that's the one where, uh, yeah, they reject the Sunday law, right? So that's where I first hear about that there's not going to be a Sunday law. That's in 2019, that's right. And then we're going to have the camp, the, the meetings in Germany in August. That's going to culminate with the open rebellion of PLPR on August 29th, 2019. September 7th, Jeff is going to do the last sermon at um, Lambert Church where he calls out uh, this rebellion. And then 63 days later, we're going to have November 9th, 2019. Um, that 777 days begins. And it's really a testing time for this movement. So the movement is presented with all kinds of truths. And when we get to December 25th, 2021, they have they have rejected these truths, though it's not going to be clearly evident that that has occurred until this year. We're going to see clearly that um, and we could say last year, I guess, too. But but they have rejected that message. Right. So they've rejected July 18th. And all of the basis for everything that this movement really stood for and what Adventism has stood for, though they don't realize it. So, so we have a lot of dates that we could put in here. We could parallel, we could, we could, you know, put some of these dates in here. What the, like, even when we say that the Omega pushes, right? So, so we have the response of future for America. But when does Omega, when does the King of the South push at the King of the North? Right. So what would be the parallel for 1798 in this movement? So let, let's just consider that for a bit. So we have November 9th, 2019, paralleling November 9th, 1989. And we're, we're applying this here. So we know in the historical application, you know, we're saying this is 1798. So we're paralleling what happened in 1798 with something in this movement. And that obviously isn't, in this case, in the present truth application, it's not going to be uh, November 9th, 2019, right? So it's going to be something before that. So, so where does he, Parminder's movement, push? Would we go back to October 13th or October 3rd, I mean? 2018, would we go back to that history? Would we go earlier in Parminder's history? Maybe at Parminder's ordination? Would we have when he time set back in 2012? Are we going to look at something that's, that's closer to November 9th? One of the ones, one of the things we could look at is we could look at when Jeff retires. So remember, he's going to retire in 2019 on, uh, the date is, I think I have April 8th or something. That's going to be his first day of retirement. That's any, any thoughts on how we would parallel the King of the South pushing at the King of the North, which in this case isn't, isn't the papacy in the present truth application, right? It's, it's future for America, but it, it's representative. It's paralleled in this, in the, our line with uh, the papacy in the USA. Maybe there are some symbols that we could use no ideas well all i can see through the whole thing as in the whole of history really is the battle for truth and uh a, a loyalty you know 
Are you going to be loyal to what God has shown you, or are you going to eventually depart from it? Are you going to take the opinions of men above what God has shown you? And I'm getting flack because I just don't back down on some things. And maybe I'm being unmerciful towards some people, but having to deal with a psychopath, I mean, I think of other psychopaths I've dealt with, and, and I don't trust them at all. You know, once they show where they really stand, I realize I'm not fighting class and plot here. This is an actual spiritual war. And this is what I see in the movement, too. Why would we want to retract on anything God has shown us? Yeah, well. <laughs> it's a battle for the mind and it's a battle for the will. It's a battle of allegiance. Mm -hmm. If God has shown me something, then he will confirm it. No matter what any, anybody says, if, if I'm being or acting wrong, then he's definitely going to show me eventually. And it's often through my just asking him. You know, sometimes I learn through having my nose rubbed in the situation, but often it's just the spirit will, will, will show me something from his word. He'll convict me. And I'll say, oh, Lord, you know, I mean, I've been right in this area, but maybe I went a little bit too overboard in this area. Or maybe I failed in this area. You know, and that's what we need to be doing before God, each one of us. Like, it doesn't matter whether you're trying to, it does matter. You're trying to please God or man, you know, you have to decide for God. And if it means walking the road alone, so be it. That's the decision I've made in my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to consider, you know, which, which I, I agree with you. Obviously, we, to abandon the truth for the reasons that people have used is obviously not sound. So I'm just trying to think about some of these symbols of what what we can connect from. Um, so one is we have this time of the end. So if we take uh, 6256 and 7093 um, and we add those together. So as a phrase, the time of the end, we get 13,349. And we addressed this number before. Let me see. Where, where did we do this? We did. I thought we addressed this number. Maybe it's not in the paper. It doesn't show any matches. So maybe I did it in some other place. I would also like to add that the psychopath, I'm not, I'm not referring to Jeff or anybody else in this movement. I'm referring to somebody that I'm currently moving with. Okay. Just to make that clear. So I, I see everything now as a spiritual, a, a strong, clear spiritual battle. I see it in the movement too. It's all a matter of loyalty and standing for the truth. No matter well, what. I, well, you know, whether we label people as psychopaths or not, the point is if somebody's not controlled by the spirit of Christ, they're controlled by a satanic spirit. And Satan is a psychopath. We can say that. Whether somebody's truly a psychopath, that is, they have no actual human emotions that might be, people can act in a psychopathic way and not be technically a psychopath, but I, I don't know if the labels are helpful. We have to deal with each person. I mean, obviously, to trust somebody, you have to have a reason to trust them, right? And, yeah, and when, I mean, you haven't walked this pathway, so you don't know what I'm up against here. But I mean, now that she's been exposed, she's behaving herself. But I'm just yeah. saying it's temporary. Yeah, I, I, all I'm saying is that you know, I've I've experienced lots of negative things in my life, and people that you know I'm not too impressed with. But I don't know if they're unredeemable. So I still always treat everybody as if they're redeemable. But um, anyway, getting back to these, this number. So this 13,349, I don't think I did the math correctly. 6256-7093. This ends up being a span of 36 years, I think. Yeah, so 36 years and... 36 years and 200 days. So to try to figure out if that fits somewhere in this history, you know, I'd have to work with it a little bit. So we had the start of that war, December 24th. So I'm just doing some of these. Okay, so that wouldn't work. We we'll go to June 7th, 1982. And then I count 13, 3, 4, 9. I know you can't see what I'm doing. That brings me to December 24th, 2018. So maybe that has something to do with it. So if we go when the Pope and 
Ronald Reagan meet? So we go June 7th, 19, it's 1982, right? That's the date we have. And we count 13,349 days. Um, it's going to bring us to December 24th, 2018. So I can show you this here. There's the calendar converter. You can see I got the dates there, June 7th, 1982 to December 24th, 2018. Now, December 24th, 2018 is the last day I'm at the School of the Prophets officially, right? So I end up, uh, my dad dies uh, four days before that, and we leave on uh, Christmas Eve. We go back to Alberta. Now, we do have to come back and get my vehicle, and when we come back to get my vehicle, we are not welcome, so they don't want us there anymore. So that's kind of interesting. So if we're going to take this as connected to this phrase, the time of the end, how, how would we connect that? So if we're going to take something that has to do with uh, the actions of Future for America, but it's really going to be uh, Bronwyn who's betraying the movement. So she's going to be the one responsible for kicking us out so to speak. So is this just, is this too tenuous of a connection? So if we take that phrase time at the end, right, the Hebrew numbers, and we get this 13,339 or 13,349, and that's going to go to that date. And I'm going to say, well, that date is significant because it's the last day we're actually a part of the School of the Prophets. So when we come back in, uh, so I'm trying to think when we, how long we were gone. I don't remember exactly. I'd have to look up my my flights in my emails to know how long. Anyway, we were there, but I think it's going to be in in January that we that we go back. We fly back because we have to fly for my dad's funeral, and we go back. When we get back, we're not welcome, and um, and we're there for I don't know five days or something, and then we drive back with the with the truck. So. Is that fair to put that in there? Does that seem like it has something to do with Parminder's movement and uh, the King of the South pushing at the King of the North? Or is that it should we be looking for some other symbol if we're going to use that that date? So what we're just saying when the Pope and Reagan met, that that's paralleling what's going to happen in 1989, but we're going to it's sort of like a mirror. I don't know. People, can you grab your, wrap your mind around that? Anybody have comments on that? I mean, just December 24th itself is a symbolic date that we have, because uh, that's going to be the start in 1979 with that, uh, Soviet Afghan war. So yeah. that. Yeah, uh, I saw that. I saw that too. So that's 39 years apart, right? Yeah. Three times 13. Okay. And then we got that. So it's, 13,349, 49 is a symbol, of course, as well. So we got the 13, the 3, the 49. So I definitely think there are some symbols there. Exactly how we would um, address those. You know, I'll put the footnote in here anyway. So we're going to say um, H6256 plus... H7093 equals 13349. Or is it way over on the side there? Stay on. Never had that happen before. I must have done something wrong. 93 equals 13349. Days from, from June 7th, 1982 to December. 24th, 2018. Okay, so that we'll put that there. At least I'll, I'll know what it means if I go back and on my notes. So I do think that it, it ties us into some of these symbolic dates and uh, ties us to that history. So actions that Bronwyn is going to, and we're, we're going to put Bronwyn as part of the Omega. I don't think she'd like that, but she really is at this point, that point in time. She's working with Parminder and Parminder seeking to get um 
future for America, even, even before Jeff resigns back in, in, in later in 2019. Parminder's already been working with Bronwyn behind the scenes. So Judas is already uh, seeking to betray Christ. Okay, so we have that. So we can say that that time at the end can tie those things together. Now, um, so we have the king of the south, and then we have uh, this word push. So now the word push is 5055, and it would be a period of 13 years and 307 days. <clears throat> is that right? I'm just going to do this again. It doesn't make sense. Five zero five from like 306, 306 and a quarter days. Okay, so almost 307 days. So 13 years, 306 or seven days, depending on where you start on a calendar. Do we have a period of 13 years that we could connect in this movement? So, I mean, obviously here we're now in 2024. You know, if we if we went from 2024 and we counted back, like, like from today, for instance, we would come to 2010, right? So it's, it's, it's almost 14 years. Didn't you say you, you joined the, the movement in 2010? Yeah, it's going to be um, in 2010, I'm going to meet Jeff on his birthday on November 7th. So I'm going to arrive at Oklahoma in 2010. Um, and if we count from the day I met Jeff, 5,055 days, it'd bring us to September 9th, 2024. Okay, so if that means anything. So, you know, how, how to say when I joined the movement per se, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I was at that camp meeting um, in Oklahoma for the whole week. And then, uh, you know, I, I mean, I never, I never officially joined the movement, maybe. I mean, maybe when I was baptized in 2018 on October 21st, maybe October 20th, I guess it would be that Sabbath. You know, maybe I officially joined the movement then. You know, it's hard to say, but obviously at that time, I'm going to uh, start studying this, this, this message. So I don't know the push, you know, just to connect it to me personally. I don't know if that's what we would do. Now we could count you know, from some other point of time. I mean, you could put that 2030 date in there, that April 5th date, and that's going to bring us back to uh, like 2016, June 2nd, 2016. You know, if we went from the April 5th date. Now, well, June 2nd, 2016, I mean, I'm at the School of the Prophets that year, but I don't know anything specific. It's a Thursday, anything specific that happened on June 2nd, 2016. So, you know, I can't really connect it. It happens to be the 25th day of the second month on the biblical calendar. So it's got a 252 in there. But otherwise, you know, nothing significant and that I would know about that date. So I don't know. But but we have this push and maybe it relates to, you know, Parminder is going to do some time setting in um, 2012. But, you know, if you, you know, it's going to be like in the end of March that he's going to be doing these presentations. I think March 28th is Jeff does a presentation about what Parminder is teaching. And, you know, that's going to bring us like to January 29th, 2026. You know, we're not, there's nothing really, but the date there is the 11th day of the ninth month. So it's November 9th as a symbol on the biblical calendar. It's January 29th on our calendar. It's 1111 on the rabbinic calendar. Uh, which is the biblical date I was born. So I don't know. But January 29th, 2026, you know, it's a date in the future. We don't, it has some symbols attached to it, but is it important? Would we, how would we connect that, right? So, so you can see, we can look at these numbers. And they're not necessarily going to, I mean, I don't like to, I'd like to see something really obvious about the numbers rather than, you know, try to fit them somewhere. Um, and they, they need to connect things that are are real and actual. I don't like dates in the future unless they have many, many witnesses on major lines, such as April 5th, 2030 does. But even then, it's just a symbolic date. We don't predict anything in the future. Um, so sometimes we can look at a date. We can say, well, yeah, it's got some symbols to it. But 
are we connecting the right thing? There's lots of dates that could have symbols that aren't connected in a line. So what we can say is that um, that there is some connection symbolically between these these Hebrew numbers and and so forth. And, and the one we talked about yesterday, of course, is if we take King of the North and the King of the South and we add those all together, they go from my birthday to November 9th, 2019. So that's something that does connect that November 9th to what we are studying. Okay, so so um, they shall come against him like a whirlwind. So what about this whirlwind? Of course, we, we already have uh, November 9th, 1989 as the historic and we're going to connect that to November 9th, 2019. Now, what does the whirlwind represent? So let's let's take a look at this. There's there's two uh, Hebrew numbers, and, and we have looked at this before. So we got the word which is a storm, and then we have this word above or over or against, right? So this is al. So five nine two one is just a preposition. Sometimes in words, they will put a lamed at the beginning of the word, and it kind of means the same as what al means. Al is an ein and a lamed. So sometimes it occurs as a separate word, and when it's attached to a word, when a lamed is attached to as a prefix, it, it's a directional marker, usually means against uh, or to, sometimes at, right, or even above or over or on. So it means much the same as al. But we have two different numbers here. We have eight one seven five and five nine two one. Now we could we could add them together. We get fourteen thousand and ninety six. Well, that's going to be you know, like thirty eight, thirty nine years, right? You know, if we used it as years, thirty eight and a half years. It's actually thirty eight years and two hundred and sixteen days and a half. So to be two hundred and sixteen days, depending where you start on a year, where you are in the leap year cycle on our calendars, right? But um, so it's a little longer than uh, 13,349, actually 747 days longer. And this is something that we at least could connect to 1979 if we went to that December 25th or 24th date when that Soviet-Afghan war begins. And that brings us to July 28th, 2018. That's a Sabbath. Now that's going to be in uh, in 2018, that's going to be when I'm invited to the School of the Prophets is in, in August. It's going to be two weeks later that I'm invited. So, so it's just two weeks off of that date if we, if we counted that. So it's two weeks prior. So I don't know if that's significant. If there's something that happens within... The movement on July 18 or July 28, 2018. Now we know that in 2018 uh, we're going to have time setting already being introduced on June 9th. Now, ah, here's what we could do with this. So what if we do it as an inclusive count? So, so this makes a lot of sense now. So when we deal with a whirlwind, what what does that refer to? So this is this is good. Okay, so we have the whirlwind, 8175, a storm. You're going to see that in, where are we here? No, I'm looking in the wrong thing. I want this. Okay, there we go. Um, so this word, um, let's go here. You can, you can see what I'm doing. This makes a lot of sense. You'll see once we get this all done. So 8175, sa'ar, means to storm, shiver, dread, bristle with horror, be very afraid. Uh, to storm, sweep away, whirl away, to sweep away. Um, and th there's different forms. So there's the call form, or the nifal form. So that has to do with to be stormy, right? The hith pa'al, to storm against, to come as a storm. And the pl form, uh, to whirl away, be stormed away. So these have to do with how they take a, a word. Um, this is a verb, of course, right? And, and, and how it's done, whether it's reflexive, whether it's, it's something that you're doing, something that's being done to you, or something that's just being done, just occurring, right? Now, um, so in this case, in Daniel 11, verse 40, we look at it here, we're going to see the form. 
and it's going to have a vav at the beginning and a yod. So it's got some form here. And it's going to look quite a bit different. You're going to see there's shin, but they also put a tav in it. Um, so this has to do with it, the hithpa'al form. And then, so they're putting it in, in the middle of the word. And I'll just confirm that because I'm not really an expert. But So I'm just going to look at this other tool that I have. Yeah, so what well, they this say... Would go, go along with, I, sorry, Theodore. This would go along with Isaiah 28, 15 to 18 really clearly then. To to what? With, with Isaiah which? 28, 15 to 18 about sweeping away the falsehoods. Okay. Yeah, so so we'll we'll see how that all connects. So I was correct. It's in the hithpa'al form, right? Uh, it's in an imperfect form. That means it's it's in an incompleted form. So that often refers to future, like he shall do something, not he has, right? And it's the third person masculine singular, right? So that's what I saw there as well. So I was correct. I'm getting better at this stuff. Just looking at these forms of words, Hebrew forms sometimes can be a bit confusing with their verbs, like a lot of languages. So that's what the the yod means. That's the masculine part of it, and it's uh, the hithpaal. So to stop, so he shall storm against, he shall come against him, right? And that's what we have. That's how it's translated in the King James, like a whirlwind. Now, now this word itself, when we we look at the places that it occurs. So we see it in uh, as a whirlwind in Psalm 58, verse 9. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them as way as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. Deuteronomy 32, 7, it's translated as feared. Um, so it's not uh, tempestuous in Psalms 50, verse 3. Oh, God shall come, shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him. And it shall be very tempestuous round about. Job twenty seven twenty one. The east wind came, carrieth him away, and he departeth, and as a storm hurleth him out of his place. So one is it's compared, and this is a really good one. It's compared to the east wind, right? So it's a parallel poetic structure. The east wind carries him away, and as a storm hurleth him out of his place. So the east wind refers to what? What's the connection? Islam. Okay, so we can connect this to Islam. Just looking at some of these other ones. So hurleth and whirlwind, you know, different words, but like in English, but the same word in Hebrew. Okay, so um, now you were saying Isaiah 28? Yeah, <clears throat> 15 to 18. Even if the word forms are different, it's definitely the same ideology, the same mindset we should have. God is going to judge these people that believe through your lies. And if you are about... repudiating, if you're repudiating what God has shown you, you are a liar. You're calling God a liar. This is how serious this uh, departure mm -hmm. from the truth is. Yeah. So, yeah. So here it's going to be dealing with this covenant with death. Isaiah 28, verse 15 to 18, and the overflowing scourge. Okay. Okay. So some some similarities there. But, but I think the primary one here is uh, going to be connected with the date that we get. So if we start, so we go from July 27th, 2018, and we go back 14,096 inclusive days, we're going to come to this, the start of the Soviet Afghan war. And that's going to bring us to July 27th, 2018. So what's the importance of July 27th, 2018? Why is it not switching? Okay, there you go. Okay. Was it the 26th day of the fourth month? Okay, well, July 27th, 2018, Daniel from Brazil is going to make a prediction. And he's going to record, he's going to do a screenshot on his phone of his prediction. So he's going to write it down. And he says there's going to be 126 days from June 10th, when Parminder presents time setting in the place with one foot on the sea, one on the land. So the sea being Europe, he's in Europe, he makes this prediction. And then 126 days later, the United States, it's going to be October 13th. 
And that's going to be confirmed on October 13th, this time setting that Parminder introduces. Okay. So that is, is what that's done on Ju- July 27th, 2018, that he makes this prediction. Make sense? So that, that date is the date that has to do with Islam, right? That's the whole reason. It's not the whole reason, but it's one of the main reasons that we're going to start looking at the prophecy of Revelation 9, because we have these symbols that are attached to it. Also, we have the 391 and a half days that connects Ezekiel and the prophecy of Josiah with Josiah Lich's prophecy, right, in 1840, right? So the end of the Ottoman Empire. So I think this is significant. I think we have to uh, put this in here. So he shall come against him like a whirlwind. So I'm going to put the footnote here on this here. So I'm adding these two together and we're going to say H. Um, I can't remember the number now. Oh yeah. It's H. Um, H 8175 plus five uh, H five nine two one equals one four zero nine six days. Okay, does that make sense? I did that correctly. So it's going to be 14,096 days from the start of the Soviet-Afghan war. That's going to be December 24th, 1979 to July 27th, 2018. 126-day prediction. Okay. I don't know why I put a bracket at the end there. There we go. Does that make sense to people? That 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 is valid. So we're connecting the Soviet Afghan war. Does the Soviet Afghan war have any to do anything to do with Islam? Well, yeah, Afghans are Islamists. Yeah. Okay. So now that's um, and that's an inclusive count, right? So I'm just counting the the first day and the last day in that. So I can put here days from okay so we have that july 27th date we have the december 24th date we have the 126 day prediction that uh daniel from brazil daniel machado Pereira, how you say his name i never say his last name because i'm not sure how to pronounce it so i think that's that's pretty good that that's something that we can tie in to the present truth so and, and the wor- the symbol of the whirlwind already connects us to Islam. And so we got the July 28th symbol, the whirlwind. And of course, uh, that's going to be connected to uh, this 126 days on October 13th, which is the end of that 126 days. I'm going to make that connection of 391 and a half days to November 9th, 2019. So it takes, it ties Ezekiel, Ezekiel's period of time. And the, which is connect, connected to the reigns of the kings of Judah for 391 and a half years. So what about chariots? What do they represent? I mean, they're military. It can represent our measuring time, the zodiac, etc. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's interesting. It's a period of 20 years and 88 days if we take the number. Okay. So it's kind of an interesting connection there. But but you're saying the chariots, the idea of this chariot, like the sun travels in the chariot, that type of thing? Well, I was thinking of of, of the uh, visions, you know, the star oh. chariots, the constellations. Okay, so um, you're saying... Measuring time. I mean, you're the one that turned us on to this. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're talking about in Ezekiel, for instance. I mean, chariots, as far as the military ideas, I mean, they're they're war chariots generally. They have to do with transportation as well and speed. So chariots and horsemen. Now, now we know, um, you know, horses can connect us also to Islam, but here in this case, it's, it's not really about Islam with the chariots and the horsemen. This is the United States coming against the king of the South. Now we know that that. I know, in- I know all that. I'm not going back on the old light. I'm just saying this is some new light too. It's obvious that with, and we're studying time. We're, we are studying the movements of the heavenly bodies. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we're going to have to look at this a little bit more tomorrow then, but um, so just trying to address this, this word chariots. So if we look up the word in uh, Hebrew, 7393, Rekeb, it's, um, it's, it's kind of weird because they also connect it to the word millstone. So the idea of chariots has to do a lot with um, the fact that it has these wheels, right? So it can be translated as a team, chariot, char- chariotry, which I believe is the skill of riding the chariot, millstone, riders. It can refer to the upper millstone as riding on a lower millstone. I guess that's why a rider. So the riders, the troop of riders, horsemen, pair of horsemen, men riding, ass riders, camel riders. Those are all the different ways in which it can be defined. And uh, so it's not so much about the wheels, it's about riding. It comes from the word Rakab 7392, which means to ride. So it has to do with the fact that they're they're riding on chariots. So they could translate it, come against him with riders and horsemen. But most of the time, the word Rakab is 87 times translated as chariots out of the 122 times it occurs in the King James. So most of the times it's chariots, it's in the plural, and then 30 times it's translated as chariot in the singular. It's translated as millstone twice, uh, once in Judges 9.53, when the lady throws the millstone and kills that guy. can't remember his name. And then uh, 2 Samuel 11.21, it's also translated as a millstone. It's translated as a multitude in 2 King 19.23. Where it just talks about the multitude of chariots. So it could, could have been translated as multitude of my riders or something. I, I don't see why they count as multitude because actually they have chariots there. I think that, that doesn't really make sense that they say it's multitude, but I'd have to look at the Hebrew and why they do that. So upper millstone and there's another word for millstone. So the rider stone, millstone and wagons in Ezekiel 23. Or it says chariots and wagons. Well, the chariots is 2021 number and the wagons is 7393 there. So they could have had it there. So they just have another word for chariots as well. Chariots and riders they could have had and wheels, right? They shall come against thee with chariots, wagons and wheels and with an assembly of people, which they shall set against thee, buckler and shield and helmet round about. And I'll set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgment. So Ezekiel 23, 24. Okay, so... How about so the, Revelation 18, 21 and 22, about the millstone? Which one? Revelation 18, 21 and 22. It's the destruction of Babylon. Yeah, with the millstone. The angel throws the millstone. Yeah, it's pretty heavy graphic stuff. Yeah. So um, we'll come back to this tomorrow. We're going to look at these words a little bit. Compare different verses that use these words and see what connections we can make, you know, with chariots, with horsemen, uh, with ships, right? Just examine it a bit more and see if there are things that we can connect to our history. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, let's pray. The dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning, for all that you do in our lives. We pray that you can be with each person, watch over them, our family and friends. May your angels attend them. Help us when we are grieving and sorrowing in various ways. And uh, please be with us throughout this day and bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.